Dear Panties and Pens, it's your girl, Lau Pen, CEO of ISLP, the Ink Spot LLC. Today's video is called C Pen 90s CD Haul. Okay? So, first of all, thank you so much for watching, checking out the Penny Black YouTube channel, and also supporting my business, ISLP, the Ink Spot LLC. Um, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the Penny Black YouTube channel if you haven't already. Okay. So a couple of weeks ago, um, I just had gotten back from my vacation. I went to Seoul, South Korea and Jeju Island, South Korea. So stay tuned for my travel guides, Loud in Seoul and Loud in Jeju, that will be coming soon to a page near you. So you know how it is when you come back from vacation, you don't want your vacation to end. So it somehow ended up in Josie Records. I decided to buy myself um, Aaliyah's One in a Million on vinyl, and I was there to go pick it up. But I also decided to buy a couple of new um, CDs since I was there. So I was like, let me do a CD haul video on my most recent pickups. Um, so um, because recently I decided to make the Penny Black YouTube channel and, um, and my blog mostly about music. I'm still going to feature other topics like fashion, food, art, and travel and things like that. But it's mostly going to be about music. And so my favorite types of music are 90s hip-hop and R&B and then K-pop, like contemporary K-pop. And so when I was in Josie, I got some new CDs. So I was like, let me do a CD haul. And so just since the channel is mostly going to be about music now, just so every video isn't Pens Rhythm Nation, Pens Rhythm Nation and getting too repetitive, um, C, C Pen is going to be when I feature like my newest CDs that I'm adding to my collection. So I'm back into physical music again. I only listen to physical music. I'm done with streaming unless I don't have the album on um, CD or vinyl and just really cannot get it on CD or vinyl. I do not do any streaming. And really the only time I even do some streaming is when I'm in the car. So this album that I'm holding in my hand to finally start talking. Let me take a sip of water real quick because I shot 20 videos. Like, I literally shot eight different videos today. So your girl is a little thirsty. Okay, so the first album that I have in my hand is Brownstone from the bottom up. So for those that don't know, Brownstone was a three-piece girl group from the 90s. Um, I think I may have shown this album in a previous video, but I'm just like, let me just show it again. I never, I feel like these artists never got to get like unboxing videos. So I really want to make sure I show off the packaging. So like I said, um, Brownstone was a three-piece uh, girl group from the 90s. Um, they were on Michael Jackson's label. So that's a cool fun fact about them. But yeah, like these groups, they never got like their due when it come to how artistic and cool their packaging and photos and stuff was. Um, just because obviously these albums came out way before the internet. The internet was not a thing when Brownstone was, um, out and popular. So let's make it a thing to just like give them their due now. Let's give these three beautiful black women their due. So this is like the uh, part, this I believe has, doesn't have the lyrics, but it has the um, song credits. Like, you know, who wrote and produced what on the song. And they actually did a lot of their own songwriting and production, the members did, which is really cool. Um, and one of their biggest hits is the song Grapevine. So um, it's, it's an iconic 90s R&B song. It's absolutely phenomenal. One of my favorite songs of all time. And then also the song, If You Love Me. And then this whole album is really, really dope. And again, like I said, they worked with, just so y'all make sure I'm not lying. Do you see Michael Jackson's name up there at the bottom as one of the executive producers? Okay, hopefully you did. Um, so yeah, I got this from Josie. The next album I got was Craig David's Born to Do It. Craig David is actually still out, still making music. I'm, and this is what the album like looks like. Now let's pull out this uh, CD booklet. So that's the front of the CD booklet again. Because these artists, they didn't get to get unboxing videos and stuff like that. That's saying that wasn't a thing when Born to Do It came out. Born to Do It came out. 2000 yeah the year 2000 so this album is literally 22 years old so there's artists who were born in the year 2000 that are making music it's super duper weird to know that that somebody who's born in the year 2000 is now grown enough to make music 
and can be listening to this Craig David album. But this is a phenomenal album. This is the album that has, um, you know, like his biggest uh, hits as far as radio play, um, Fill Me In, um, In Seven Days. Um, I love that song, but the whole album is phenomenal. This is definitely a press play album. I need to listen to it more. My issue is now is that like I'm actually putting myself on punishment for the weekend from Josie. Josie celebrating their eighth anniversary, so they're doing this big sale. And so I put myself on punishment to not go this weekend and get more albums because now I'm starting running an issue that I have so many albums that I'm not circulating and listening to them enough. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting my money's worth and actually listening to the albums because most of these CDs, actually not most of these CDs, all the CDs I'm going to show you guys in this video, the CD haul, were all $1. So for those that want to get back into listening to physical music but are like, damn, Penny, I don't know, I don't got a lot of money. Like if you go to a, a store like a Josie where they're going to have you CDs and used records, just get you used CDs and used records. And then that way you can start a physical music collection again without spending a ton of money. But I'll do a future video on like how you can start a physical music collection of either CDs and vinyl without spending a ton of money. Um, okay, so that's Craig David. Then I got Brandy's self-titled debut album. But yes, again, I got all these CDs for a dollar. I don't know if I actually said that, but yes. This is what the CD itself looks like. Now let's show off this album booklet. So this is kind of like CD haul unboxing video. But again, because this album dropped, I believe in 94. Yeah, what no unboxing videos on YouTube and Brandy's obviously still alive and still creating phenomenal music and art, but just to give her her due that she deserved as a black millennial woman who made it like, she just really changed the culture because when Brandy came out, we didn't have like a young teen black artist. You know what I'm saying? So Brandy, Monica, and then Destiny's Child, they held us down for like the teen market in R&B um, in, in those eras. And they just, I don't think necessarily got their due for how much they influenced um, a black millennial woman like myself because I you know obviously I had my my parents and my aunts uncles and cousins and teachers and all those positive influences in my day-to-day -day life but it still matters you know as a young girl growing up when you have those positive influences in your day-to-day -day life but then you can also look to an artist like Brandy and she's also positive because you know her music was very real and it was very cool but at the same time there wasn't just this all this ratchetry and stuff on it I have no problem with talking about uh with cursing on songs or talking about sex uh, but I just think that those that, that type of music needs to be reserved for adults, you know, and and like kids and teenagers need things that are like relevant and relatable to them, but just not with the those topics and in, in, in language on there. You know what I'm saying? Um, because they just don't need to be listening to that type of stuff. Um, I'm just I'm, I'm a very old school person. Pennies and pens. I'm gonna be honest. So my favorites from this album, the song Baby, Best Friend, I Want to Be Down, Dedicate, Broken Hearted. I mean, there's so many hits on this album. It's phenomenal. And I believe this was produced by Rodney Jerkins. I believe he did a lot of work on this album. Rodney Jerkins did because she used to do a lot of work with Rodney Jerkins, um, Dark Child. And then the next album, um, so I purposely put these two together, is Monica. So like I said, this is Monica's um, debut album, Miss Thang. And just like I said with Brandy, you know, she, I don't know, really ever got her due as a black millennial woman that just really pushed this culture and created this idea of this, this classy young black woman who knows what she wants and is Miss Thang and is going after it, but is doing it all in a very classy way, you know, because they just, it was this type of music that young teen girls really needed. We needed Brandy and Monica. We needed these positive influences and that's what they gave us. Oh my God, I never knew that there was this poster. Oh my God, oh my God, I did not know this cute little poster was in there. Oh my God, oh my God, that's going up on the wall. Look at that. That's so dope. And again, this album, just like Brandy's album, dropped in 95. So this came out the year after Brandy's. So Monica did not get to get 
unboxing videos and show it off on YouTube and all of that because this was not a thing in 1995, but now it is in 2022. So, and obviously Monica is still a living, breathing artist and still is creating beautiful art, uh, but just giving her her due from day one, you know, because this is her debut album and she did a phenomenal job and she deserves her due. All right, and now we have New Edition Home Again. So New Edition as an R&B group literally sets the tone for being an R&B group in music, seriously. Now y'all know how obsessed I am with this K-pop group, Monster X, and it couldn't be no Monster X if it wasn't New Edition. So when we talk about groups, male groups, we are going to talk about The Temptations, we are going to talk about the four tops. We are going to talk about Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. We are going to talk about the Beatles. We are going to talk about Queen, the Rolling Stones. We are going to talk about New Edition. And then we're going to get very um, modern. And then we're going to go into the Moss X. So we couldn't have a Moss X without New Edition, without the Temptations, without the Beatles, without Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, you know? All, all these kind of groups that came before them. We couldn't have that. So this is the front of the album. What's cool about um, Home Again, for those that don't know with this album, um, New Edition, um, New Edition's Home Again album. So New Edition originally came out in like, I guess like the mid to late 80s when they were teenage, when they were teenagers, right? And so um, then they um, kind of went their separate ways. Like they did like a couple of the members did um, solo uh, music like Ralph and then um, BBD, which was a unit of New Edition. They did the iconic song Poison. Um, so then with this album Home Again, they all came back together. And originally it was just the five. It was just um, Ronnie, Ralph, Ricky, Mike and uh, uh, Bobby. Then we added Johnny Gill later because um, there was a, sw a change up. Like Bobby Brown left the group for a little while, went solo. Then Johnny Gill joined. And so with this album, um, Home Again, the six of them got together and did this album. And it is iconic. And this is the grown man version of new edition seriously this is one of my favorite albums of all time if i could just listen to this album all day i literally would it is so slept on it dropped in 96 and every single album or song on here is a freaking hit the title track was hit me off um, but there's also tighten it up is dope shop around is dope um, something about you is dope. The production on that is fire. How do you like your love serve? You know, I'm still in love with you. Oh my God, every song on here is dope. So now let's just quickly go through the CD booklet. Because again, these albums came out, every album I'm going through since this is a 90 CD haul, they did not really be able to, except for the Craig David, that was the only one that came out in 2000. But these, these artists never got to get unboxing videos and oh, show my album and Tell people to go buy the album. They didn't get all of that in 96 because we didn't have no YouTube and internet and all of that. So let's give these black artists, because every artist I'm going to feature in today's video is black. Let's give these iconic black artists their due. Okay? Because seriously, I have uh, Monster X's The Dreaming album. And in one of their photos, they all have on like these dark suits. And like the six of them are standing there. And it's like new edition for um 2021 because the dream dropped in 2021 even though it's 2022 then i'm shooting this that album came out in 2021 and it's just like a beautiful um imitation of new edition um so yeah this new edition home again album again got all these albums from josie josie is my favorite record store here in dallas because they always have the best stuff so let's take a sip of water Y'all, I shot so many videos today. Ooh, oh my God, I'm gonna be so tired. Okay, so this is Jagged Edge's J.E. Heartbreak. Jagged Edge um, dropped, they came out in the 90s. They're still making music now, um, but they came out in the 90s. They're a very, very slept on R&B group. Um, this was their second album. This dropped in, I know it was the late 90s. I wanna say it was like 98. 99, okay. So dropped in 99. Love this album. This again is their second album. So let's open it up because it's also some really, really cool packaging. 
You know what I'm saying? CDs and CD design has always been really cool, but I think it's something that has been forgotten in this modern culture that we're living in. So these are the four members. There's actually a set of twins in this group, which is really cool. Uh, Brian and Brandon. Yes, Brian and Brandon. I forgot their names for a second. So that's Brian, that's Brandon. And then that is Kyle. And then that's Richard. Yeah, sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I have forgotten the members' names. But these are, this is the CD booklet. But look how cool that is. I'm sorry. That's cool as hell. Like Brian and Brandon's hats. Kyle just chilling. Richard's shades. It's just really dope. And then this is the back. And the CD booklet. And I believe most of the songs, it's not the lyrics. It's just the, yeah, it's just the, um, uh, song credits like who wrote and produced the songs brian and brandon the twins write a lot for jagged edge and then they also usually work with um or at least they were then um working with jermaine dupree as far as production and jermaine dupree is an iconic 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 Woo! just like he said on um money anything i write the songs that the whole world sing that's literally true jermaine dupree has written so many iconic r&b and hip-hop songs it's it's literally stupid so the next album is tony braxton's um self-titled debut album this was when um this was on la face which was Babyface's label i'm not sure she's still with Babyface's label because i know they did a more recent collaboration within the last five years um clabo album but y'all this album is one of the greatest r&b albums of all time this is a press play album this dropped in what, 92? Yeah, this is when, oh my God. Cool fun fact about Tony Braxton that I never knew, Pennies and Pens, that I have to share with Pennies and Pens. This is the coolest fun fact of all time. So Babyface wrote a song for Anita Baker, right? You know, an artist or a songwriter will obviously write a song and then have either recorded themselves or have another singer record it as like as far as the demo track to pitch it to the artist that they would like to actually sing and perform the song. So that's what he did. He had wrote a song, had Tony Braxton sing the demo, sent it to Anita Baker. Anita Baker decided she didn't want to use the song, but said the girl on the song should sing the song. That was Tony Braxton. That's literally how we got Tony Braxton, y'all. How iconic is that? Are you kidding me? Oh my God. Anita Baker gave us Tony Braxton. Lord Jesus, thank you, Anita Baker. Girl, thank you, girl. Thank you, girl. Thank you, girl. And it's crazy because Tony's voice is so similar to Anita's. If you think about two female R&B vocalists that sing in that lower register, that's Anita and Tony, you know? But they both have totally different voices at the same time, even though when you describe them, they sound similar. But this is the, the, the album booklet, and I'm so excited to put this poster on my walls, but I just got to finish showing the, the full album booklet. But y'all, I cannot wait to put that poster on the wall. How iconic is that? I mean, come on. You get an album from 1992 and I'm about to have a Tony Braxton poster on the wall. I just, I literally got to get more tape. I've been saying that in all my videos. I got to get more tape because I have so many posters I got to put up. But it takes a lot of tape to put up all of these posters, pennies and pens. The amount of money that I have spent on tape. I mean, Scotch literally needs to sponsor me. Seriously, I should send them a pitch. And they would probably be like, why is this girl asking for sponsorship for tape but when you do the posters because i'm trying to do all of the walls even though in these videos it seems like the whole wall was covered there is parts at the bottom that is not covered and you see this wall here to my right it has uh, mama moo and marvin gay so far but it needs a lot more covered up and then there's just a little few other walls here in the apartment that i plan to cover i plan to cover every single wall is going to have um, posters on it Okay, so let's keep it pushing because we're already at 20 minutes and I still got to get through four more albums. Okay. Okay, so now we got Tony Braxton's Secrets. Keeping in line with the Tony Braxton. So that's the front. That's the back. Again, another iconic R&B album. This was her second album. So the first was her self-titled debut. Then Secrets is her second album. She's obviously had many albums since then. Still is living, still is creating phenomenal art and music. But again, just like every other artist before, she didn't get to get her due when this album was first released, which was released in 96. So in 96, she didn't get to get unboxing videos. 
in YouTube features. So let's give it to her now. Queen Tony deserves it. And and honestly, like Tony Braxton has influenced so many female artists. Um, it's crazy how influential she truly is as an artist. She has just really, really um, influenced the industry. Um, when it comes to creating this beautiful music with these lyrics, um, really calling men out for the bullshit that they put us through in relationships. Um, also, um, just wearing those this seductive, seductive sexual uh, type of clothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? The, the iconic dress that she wore. You know what I'm saying? It's just... Tony Braxton is such an influencer. I mean, she's just really, really phenomenal. So just an icon. All right, and now we got Sade's Lovers Rock. Um, anything Sade is phenomenal. Um, just the vocals, it's the lyricism, the production. It's just always so deep with Sade. I mean, it's just gonna take you there. I mean, there's literally a song on here called Immigrant and Slave Song. So I mean, Sade is just gonna have you thinking, sweetie. You ain't gonna be no dummy if you listen to Sade. So here's just some imagery of Sade and the band making the song in the CD booklet. So this CD booklet is rather simple. And then the other side of it is just the lyrics to all of the songs on the album. And this is why I gotta start listening to these 90s albums and stuff more because these be like full albums. These albums be like an hour and a half long. My K-pop albums be like 10 to 30 minutes tops because they're either single albums or mini albums. So these, I miss these 90 albums where it was a full album of like an hour and a half worth of music. Matter of fact, I listened to this album finally for the first time last night, uh, The Fuji's The Score while we're transitioning into the next album. And this album is 73 minutes long. Like, it's so long. But it's iconic. I mean, it's the Fugees. I mean, it's Lauren. It's Praz. It's Wyclef. Literally at the height. I mean, just an iconic hip-hop album. Oh, my God. Literally. The Fugees, the score. That's another reason why I kind of waited to listen to it, too. Because I was like, I really want to wait until I can really listen to and enjoy this album. And sometimes when you wait to listen to it, it makes it feel like you just got a new album, even though you didn't. So this is the CD booklet, what it looks like. So for those that don't know, this is Wyclef Jean, this is Lauren Hill, and this is Praz. And then you just always got to give Lauren respect for being able to be in a hip hop group with two men and hold her own and literally just slay every single song just like they slayed every single song. Um, I'm probably gonna have to do a full album review of this album, but at least for now, I'll just at least show you guys the album because it's just so iconic. And then the Fuji's The Score, when did this drop? This dropped in 96. 96 was an iconic year for music. Oh my God, if you break it down. Okay, so we have the Fuji's The Score in 96, Jay-Z's Reasonable Doubt, Tony Braxton's Secrets. Oh my God, there were so many albums that dropped in 90, between 1994 and 96. There were so many iconic albums that came out. Those were some beautiful years in hip hop and R&B. Okay, so we're almost at 25 minutes and I'm on the last album, perfect on time. Okay. So, last and final album I have not listened to yet as far as listening to this particular CD. I've obviously heard this album many times because Usher was, you know, the original, even though I do not like this artist at all, Chris Brown. Um, and a better Chris Brown, in my opinion, and a more respectful uh, version. Um, one that I actually would rock with. Um, but um, what is so iconic about Usher especially on this album, My Way, is that he literally created the idea of the young male artist that was like for young girls and women, um, but like kind of like cute and a player, you know what I'm saying? But still singing these really cool songs. So he created that, that idea and concept. Well, 
Really, Bobby Brown created it, but then Usher basically perfected it, you know? And then he's also one of the few male artists that really does genuine Michael Jackson impressions. Like, Usher always incorporates some type of Michael Jackson into his work, but he does it in such an original and organic way. Because sometimes when artists put Michael Jackson influences in their work, it's just so freaking obvious. But with Usher, it's not obvious. It's always uniquely him. So I'm very excited to show y'all this CD booklet real quick as we wrap up this video. Because like I said, I have not actually listened to the album yet. That's why the, the dollar sticker is still on there. Because I don't take that off until I listen to the album in its entirety. Because unfortunately, when you're buying CDs for a dollar, sometimes the CD skips a lot. So if the CD skips, I'm going to get rid of it. Josie does not take returns on $1, $2 items. But at least if I figure out that it skips, I'll just go ahead and like toss it, throw it away, whatever. And since it was only a dollar, just take an L on the dollar. Because I do have to take an L on an album that I had bought, which I'm sad about. It's Destiny's Shout. So I'm going to have to find. Uh, but this is the CD booklet. All these cool photos of Usher. Again, he's like the bad boy, but still sort of good, but still singing these really cute songs and you know this is definitely one of his most iconic albums of all time my way with the title song my way and then you also have you make me wanna on here you also have nice and slow you know you have some really really iconic usher songs on this album so i cannot wait to spin it i actually will probably go ahead and spin it after i click the end button on this video but this was C-Pen 90 CD haul. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will be doing a lot more features um, on as my CD collection continues to grow. I will continue to do features um, on the new CDs that I get and pick up. Um, I will also continue to do vinyl videos on new vinyl that I'm getting, new K-pop, whatever. I'm babbling at this point because I shot seven different videos today. I shot like all these different K-pop album review videos and then I just did this 90 CD haul video. So your girl is tired. So your girl is getting off the camera. Y'all have a good day. Peace. I thought I was getting off the camera. Am I getting off?